Hello, thank you for joining me today on the very first one of our devotions in the fourth mansion. So, we've been working on uh, St. Teresa's image of the soul as an interior castle with seven mansions. So, here is the center, and we started out here and did the first, second, and third mansions, all the quests involved in each of those. And now we're moving into the fourth. All right, and these are by St. Teresa of Avila. All right, so we're going to use a method of Lectio Divina in which Teresa is commenting that the entry door to any castle, really any of the mansions, is prayer and meditation. So we start with a reading called the Lectio and the prayer, reflections, and contemplation. So we will start with reading and then we will reflect on our reading and we'll pray some about it, meditatio. And then we will actually have a conversation with God in Oratio, which is a more typical prayer. And then contemplation, which we sit in silence. So the goal here is to discover who you really are below the surface, the inner you. And the inner you is more authentic, generally. That's the genuine you, and we're on a search to find that, or I should say you are where we'll be reading scripture and writing in a journal. It doesn't matter what this is. It could be loose paper or just a spiral notebook. But you'll need to write um, down uh, when we ask God questions or when you reflect on something, the journal is there for you to write. We're going to be praying each question and waiting for the Holy Spirit to answer and write down the still small thoughts that come to your mind. So I'm teaching you how to ask the Holy Spirit questions and to wait. And I know you probably aren't very uh, good at this yet, but that's all right. That's what we'll be learning in the fourth mansion. Remember, we started contemplation already, but now we're going to be focused and deeper as a result of our practice. So, each mansion has spiritual quests. In the first mansion, we were working on purification and prayer. So, the quests were about self-knowledge, habits, subconscious overreactions, to clear our pipelines of debris. Because we want God to use us, God sending His love through us to the world. So, I'm calling that a pipeline or a channel. And you become one. The more your debris is cleared out, the wider your channel is for God's love to flow out. That's the picture I'm asking you to keep in mind. The second mansion, we worked more on self-knowledge and the importance of humility. In fact, humility is probably the greatest of all of these. Perseverance in the faith and in prayer and beginning to know God's love on a more personal level. So when I'm saying no, I don't mean uh, head knowledge as much as I mean gut knowledge, heart knowledge. And then in the third, we went for surrender of our motives and will to God's will. And when we surrender, that allows, and the contemplation we've done, is we're using then the spiritual gifts that have been given to us. Right, so we are moving in now into the fourth where it says living inside your center, prayer of quiet and spiritual sweetness. having a little trouble with my system here or me I don't know which I'm afraid to do too many for fear it will go too far okay so mansion fourth our first quest is about 
God knowing us, but what do we know about him? So the fourth mansion in general is living inside your center, and we're talking about today the omniscience of God, God knowing about us, and then what do we know about him? And the Bible passage that's going to be, we'll be using throughout the fourth mansion is, we must have spiritual eyes to see God, since he is spirit. From John 4:24. So we'll be talking about developing our spiritual eyes. All right, so here is our reading. It is from Psalm 139, and I know you'll, as we go through Psalm 139 today and the next time, I think you'll be realizing, oh, these are very familiar. Starting with verse 1. God, investigate my life. Get all the facts firsthand. I'm an open book to you. Even from a distance, you know what I'm thinking. You know when I leave and when I get back. I'm never out of your sight. You have everything I'm going to say. You know it all before I start the first sentence. Five, I look behind me and you're there. Then up ahead and you're there. Two, your reassuring presence coming. And going. All right, so let's reflect. What does God know about me? So, in our first reflection, what does God? I want you to think specifically about all the things God must know about you. All right, go 45 seconds. Remember your journaling and that if you need more time, just pause the video. All right, so I hope that you did write something down because you'll learn more about yourself if you do this. Now I'm going to come in and tell you what I thought about, but it's good if both of us do it. All right, what does God know about me? Well, I realize that, well, since God knows everything, that the whole idea of thinking I can hide anything from God, God seems ridiculous now, doesn't it? Where can I hide from God? What knowledge can I hide from God? And it also makes me realize if God already knows everything about me, what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, where I'm going, where I've been, and all the facts about my life, um, there's no point in being shy. That God already knows me very well and is just anxious to get to know me further is what I'm thinking because God knows a lot more about me than I know about God yeah I wonder if yours was like that when you started realizing all the ways in which God knows you all right let's read it again Psalm 139 1 through 5 God investigate my life get all the facts firsthand I'm an open book to you even from a distance, you know what I'm thinking. You know when I leave and when I get back. I'm never out of your sight. You know everything I'm going to say before I start the first sentence. I look behind me and you're there. Then up ahead and you're there too. Your reassuring presence coming and going.
So the second question here is, how am I influenced from my realization that God is all-knowing? How are you influenced just thinking about that God is all-knowing? Go ahead and write in your journal. Go. If I'm coming back too soon, you can pause the video. Well, I'm now thinking that God knows everything about me. God's perspective of me is all-knowing, which means that it would be easy if I got to know better, easier if I got to know better to learn more about myself, because we know a lot about ourselves is hidden to us, right? We know the subconscious is pretty much hidden from us. Our unconscious reactions, etc., that we've talked about previously. So, God is the place to go if I want to know more about myself, as well as if I want to know more about Him. That's what I was struck with. Not only the fact that I can't hide anything from Him, but that if I want to know myself better, He's the one to ask as well. I hope you got something out of thinking about that. What does God know about me and how does that change things just knowing that? All right. Now, the the verse we were talking about, we must have spiritualized to see God since he is spirit. So, how do we get spiritual eyes? So, the first one is you just let your mind reply, you know, as if this is just a questionnaire. All right, so how do we get spiritual eyes? Think about the ways we could get spiritual eyes, and I will be doing the same thing. Go. These are the ones that my mind thought of. So if I was on a questionnaire and was asked this question, well, reading the Bible is supposed to give us a real understanding of what God is like, right? Scripture. Praying. We believe when we pray that we are talking to God. So you would think that praying would help us get spiritual eyes, wouldn't you? Thinking about God. And talking to others about God all of these things should my mind is saying help us get spiritual eyes what all did you have you probably had some different things and maybe some of the same ones that I had because these are things those of us in the church 
uh, kind of have learned that this is how we can learn about spiritual things. Now, the second question, though, now we're going to have the Spirit. So remember, in this, we pray to the Spirit, and we wait for an answer. And as we've talked about this before, I wait for just a word to appear on my mind. I don't actually hear anything. Okay, so it's not like voices are speaking. But words appear on my mind for me to interpret. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray first. How do we get spiritual gifts and wait on the Spirit? And then, if nothing comes, then I simply pray it again. If nothing comes, I simply pray it again. All right? So, let's take a minute and you work on that too. So, first, Lord, how do we get spiritual eyes? So, we probably all got different replies because the Spirit's replies are more varied, I would say. All right, what I heard the Spirit say was... something like spending time. All right, so I assume spending time with me is what the Lord is saying. The other word that appeared on my mind was deliver, but I don't know what that means. Right? I don't know exactly what that means. And sometimes that will happen to you, that the word that appears, you don't understand the context of it. All right, so I'm curious about what it is that you put but I think it's interesting if we just look at what my mind said versus what the Spirit said to me. We see that my mind went to all the things that we are told that we are to do. And a lot of these things happen in church. And we do these in worship. And we do these in groups. Um, but what the Spirit said was very personal, like spend time with me. Oh. Well, since he is the source of spiritual gifts. Oh, you know what that maybe meant was I deliver spiritual things to you. So by spending time alone with God, that means that we, we are becoming, we, he is delivering spiritual things to us that enable us to see more clearly. All right, so we see more like you see. This is more like we see like others in the church see, which isn't bad, right? 
it's just that these are the things we're already pretty comfortable with. We know these. Over here, if we have to have spiritual eyes to see God since he's spirit, what we're wondering is, how do, in the fourth mansion, how do we get deeper into this? And the spirit replies, spend time with me because I'm going to deliver spiritual things to you um, so that you, I should put you, will see more like I see. I'm sorry, I'm getting my like I see. Do you remember in the, um, especially in the third bench, and we were talking about the fact that the fullness of God means that we begin to see more like God sees. That's what fullness of God means that we acquire. And so by seeing how God sees, um, our pipeline becomes open to other people that are around us, that need us. All right, so fullness of God really seems like it is getting spiritual eyes. Getting spiritual eyes is like what is called the fullness of God. I think I misspelled that. All right, and that I'm putting that in quotes because there's a lot of Bible verses in the New Testament that refer to the fullness of God. And that's if we can see like God if we get spiritual eyes. And of course, this happens over time, right? Over t over time our eyes get better vision. All right. I wonder if you have any questions about these. We're going to reflect a little more on them to kind of help us flesh this out more. So, for the further reflection, knowing God and gaining spiritual eyes. So, let's look at a couple questions. How do human relationships thrive? So I want to think about, you know, if you're a mother, you can talk about your children. What's your relationship with your children and how you make that thrive? Or with your spouse or with your friends or with your sister or brother, etc. So what is it that makes human relationships thrive? So go ahead and ponder this for about 30 seconds. The first things that I'm thinking about are communication and contact because um, they're essential. And especially if you think about children, letting them know what you're thinking, letting them know what they should do, and the contact of reaching people, finding people where they are, calling people, texting people, coming to someone's house. And contact can also mean, as with children, picking them up, patting their head, contact of some sort. At school, I'm a teacher, um, I often put my hand very lightly on someone's shoulder or a teacher. Um, or lately, I've been doing more like little COVID hugs, which are like little soft pinches on someone's arm. So contact can mean um, um, I mean contact um, verbally or it can mean contact even personally. All right, communication and contact. So another one that uh, I'm thinking of is is attention.
don't you think in one of the greatest issues in human communities is whether people get attention or not. For children, whether they get attention from their parents, do they get attention from their teachers, do they get attention from their friends? We expect people to give us attention if we are in a relationship, don't we? Many, many marriages, after the initial times of lots and lots of attention in early marriage, when that kind of peters out because you get so used to each other and take each other for granted that there's less attention given, there's so many assumptions made, you know, as we're together longer and longer. So attention actually gets to be maybe more important than it ever was before because people may feel they're not getting enough attention to thrive. So the term here that we were using was the term thrive because it's not just enough to have a human relationship. Our life is more satisfying when we have thriving human relationships, when we go for the best in human relationships. So these were the things that I was thinking uh, about most. Which of these transfer readily to a relationship with God? You may have had other things like, how do they thrive? Kindness, compassion, listening. Let me go up here. because all of those make a relationship thrive as well. So which of these transfer ready, readily to a relationship with God? And I think you could see that uh, we need to spend time with God in attention as well and willingness to have a relationship. then we would get to know God better. So the factors in good human relationships, communication, contact, attention giving, as well as all of these, kindness, compassion, listening, and you probably had many more. The ones that really transfer are the idea of communicating with God, contact with God, and attention given, because just like in any relationship, we need to spend enough time with God in order to better our relationship and get to know God better. We were talking about the fact at the beginning that God knows us as we see totally. Whereas, do we know God at gut level, at heart level? How well do we know God? And so this first, very first quest that we've had today has about thinking, how do we get to know God better? And it seems the answer is spending more time with him. And of course, in our next thing, contemplation, um, contemplation is listening to the to listening to God. The Holy Spirit writes on our hearts. We don't understand today, but over time, fruits of the Spirit become more active in our life, so that we were, are able to be more kind, more compassionate, better listeners, more intuitive about understanding other people. But at the same time, we're beginning to understand God's better and to gain God's perspective. So, first we'll sit silently, and you know your mind will be distracted. So, you just, whenever you realize you're not being still before God, um, just use your word, your sacred word. Remember, I use just the word Lord, reminding myself who I'm talking to. 
it doesn't matter what your word is and then you come back and of course I have to say my word many times during a contemplation because it is human to be distracted eventually we get better at that so the third thing that is persistence we just keep going back and we just keep trying and eventually not only today do we get through it but as we continue on this we get better we just become more skilled at sitting quietly with God so remember you're going to be pausing the video um, after we hear the bells and then you're going to sit in silence for as long as you can right for as long as you can When you are done, just restart. Hello, welcome back from contemplation. So remember, it's possible that you think nothing occurred. All right, I hope that you're notice that you're extending your time a little bit, that it becomes easier. All right, and so remember that God has written on our hearts, but our hearts have neither ears nor eyes. So we don't know what God has said to us. What we're doing is trusting in faith that God is giving us the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is working with us the entire time that we are sitting here. The other thing we're trusting is that we're getting to know God better. So remember we're talking about our inner self, not our exterior very conscious self, but our inner self and contemplation over the ages thousands of years is the way that people have gone in the silence waiting for God to write on their hearts and give them guidance I want to thank you for being here I want you to come again of course so in this mansion there will be 11 videos remember I don't want them to be slow you know too long but on the other hand I don't want to go too fast in them so you can stop and start as you need and I will just try to do the best I can with each of these quest videos 
All right? In God's love, I'll talk to you later. Bye.